Next, with our task number three, we're going to be dealing with default route advertisement, route leaking, and the summary metrics. Here in R2, we're going to advertise a default route, and the condition is we still need to also advertise the more specific loopback2 route for R2. And then for the default route, we want to change the AD to 85, and we want the metrics to be advertised as 1500101551500. Let's just advertise to R1, and then we'll make sure that R3 can reach all of the R2 loopback interfaces through that default route. Okay, so first we're going to deal with the default route advertisement here on R2. And as the task required, we also need to leak the route for R2 loopback 2 interface. Okay, so default route advertisement with route leaking. First, we'll specify the prefix list for the route that we want to leak. And that's for a loopback two. So actually, let me change that. Actually, before we do that, we, I don't think we already configured loopback two to be advertised. So let's take a quick look. I think we only advertised loopback zero so far for R2. So loopback two right here. Yep, so we need to do under loopback two is IPv6 CHRP1 and make sure it's being received by R3, which is right here. And then we can just copy that and then do the IPv6 prefix list. O2 permit. And here's the route for the subnet. Then we configure the route map called self permit 10. And then we're going to match it with IPv6 address, prefix list, LO2, system match the R2 loopback2. Now to advertise default route, we're actually going to do a summary route way, which is under the serial interface, we do IPv6, summary address, and then EIGRP1, and we're pretty much going to summarize it to all zero. And if you do question mark, we have option to do leak map. So whatever routes that's matched that particular route map will be leaked. And for us, that's the R2 loopback2. And we have a route map configured already called self. Okay, just to make sure that our prefix list, you can see it's there's some resync going on here. And to double check that our prefix list has been matched correctly, we do show IPv6 prefix list default. And here we see a hit count for now R2 loopback2 prefix. Which means now if you hop over to R3 and do show IPv6 routes, EAGRP, we'll hope to see a default route and we do. And you can see compared to what we had before, we had the R2 loopback interface with 2001. This is a loopback 0, 2001 2. You can see now that's no longer there because it's been summarized to a default route. But since we leaked the R2 loopback2 interface, you can see those specific routes do show up right here in the routing table of R3. Okay, so the next part of the task number three is to for R2 to change the AD of the default route to 85 and then change the matrix of the summary route. So before we make any changes, let's take a look at that default route and see how it's being seen from R1 perspective in this topology table. Right here with the show IPv6 EIGRP topology and then zero. Okay, we'll just make a quick note of that and then we're gonna redo this command in a second here. Now let's hop onto R2 and to change the summary route matrix, we'll get under the router process and then the command for that is summary matrix. And here we specify a matching prefix for the matrix we want to specify and for us it's a default route. And here is where you can specify your EHRP metrics. We're going to do 1500. For the delay, we do 10, which is essentially, this is a 10 microsecond. So by specifying 10, is essentially 100 microseconds. 1, 2, 5, 5, 1500. And then at the end, you have a chance to specify the AD as well. And this is local to R2 itself. And we said we want to do that or change it to 85. We'll enter and do show IPv6 router EIGRP. And here with our summary default route that's pointed to null, 
you can see now that's changed to uh, 85. And sometimes you might even have to clear or reapply the summary address command. But here is already changed to 85, so we are okay for the AD of the summary route. And now if we go back to uh, R1, here compared to the metrics that we have earlier with 1536, it's now been set to the 1500, as well as a delay that's been changed as well. You can see by default of the serial interface is 20 millisecond, and that's additional 100 microsecond that we inserted to the to the metrics as we spe specified in the metrics of the summary route that we just did. That meets our requirement. And now for the last part, we just need to test the reachability of R2 loopback interfaces from R3. So hopping on to R3, pinging 2001, and this is loopback one on R2. 2001-2002. And then here, 1, 2, and 2, 2, which is loopback number 3. And you can see all of them are pingable from R3. Okay, so that completes our task number 3. Now for our task number 4, we're dealing with route filter. And what we need to do is to configure R1 so that R3 would no longer receive a route to R2 loopback 0. I think this is a typo here. It should be loopback 2, and this is the route that we leaked earlier. And right here, this is a typo there as well. It should be loopback 2. The R3 should still be able to reach that R2 loopback 2. Okay, so just verify in R3 in the routing table. Here is our R2 loopback 2 with 201201. So what we need to do is to configure a route filter on R1 pointing towards R3, which is the outbound on fast 0, 0. So let's get on to R1. And first we're going to specify a prefix list that will deny the routes. So it's, let's call it 2R3. And we want to deny a route to R2 loopback 2, which is 2001, 2, 0, 1. And that's going to be slash 64. We can just easily copy it right here. Actually, this one right here. Enter. And that's the only one route we want to deny. So we will need to permit everything else. And that would be permit all zero slash zero less than or equal 128, which is pretty much everything else. Now, to apply the route filter, we need to get under the router eigrp process. And the command is just like any other route filter that you normally configured for most of the routing protocols, so distribute list. But with IPv6 here, we don't have an option for a route map, so we are forced to use the prefix list, which, which we just configured. And then we'll call it 2, uh, 3. Direction we say is going to be outbound away from R1 towards R3, and the interface is fast 0, 0. Again, do a show IPv6. Prefix list detail. And here we got an enable refresh real quick. And we also got a hit count on the R2 loopback 2 and hit count 5 of pretty much everything else. Now going back onto R3 and verify our configuration with the show command, you can see that the R2 loopback 2 specific routes has now disappeared from the routing table because we just filtered it on R1. Okay, although that route is gone, we should still be able to ping that loopback interface 2 on R2. And this is because of the default route that we still have right there being advertised by R2. Okay, so that's it for task number 4 with route filter. Okay, now moving on to task number 5 with route redistribution and summarization. Here, we need to configure R3 to redistribute its loopback 1 and 2 into EHRP v6 with the metrics of 100,000, 10, 1, 255, 1500. And then we want to summarize that with the smallest possible prefix to include all of the R3 loopback 1 through 3, and then verify the R2 can reach all of the R3 loopback 1 through 3. Okay, so first let's deal with the redistribution. And since we only need to redistribute or the task mandates that we need to redistribute just the loopback 1 and 2, and that's on R3. So loopback 1 and 2 is 2001300 and 201301. So what we can do is come up with the prefix list. So we only include those two networks. And we'll call it R3 loopback 
permit 2001, 3, since it's contiguous, we can do at 300 slash 63. Since the route themselves, both of those are 64, just to include two of them is slash 63, and then we have to do less than 64. And then we can have, come up with the route map call since those are connected subnet, so we'd call it con to EIGRP permit 10. And we have to match those subnets using match IPv6 address prefix with the name R3 loopback. And since the task requires to set the routes to specific metrics, we use set metrics command with 100,000. 10, 1, 2, 5, 5, 1, 5, 0, 0, just to make sure that's correct. 10, 1, 2, 5, 5, 1, 5, 0, 0. And then to, for to perform the actual redistribution, we get under the IPv6 router, EIGRP1, and the command is right here, redistribute from connected interface with the route map that we just configured, and we call it con 2 eigrp Metrics, we, you can also set the metrics in line right here, but since we already did that under the route map, there's no need to. We'll enter, and then we do show IP6 prefix list detail. And here we already have hit counts of four for the redistribution. So now if we hop onto R1, just to verify that R1 should now be able to see the loopback one and two routes of R3. So show IPv6 route EIGRP here, it shows up an external routes for 2013 and 2301 slash 64. And if you remember earlier in this lab, we also changed the AD for external route from 170, which is the default to 175. And right there, that's just our verification that our command took effect. So now we go to R2, with show IP route, EIG, RP. You can see the R2 has received those two external route as well. And that's just for loopback one and two. and there's nothing about loopback three, which is 302. You can see it's not there because we not allow that to be redistributed. So we're trying to ping uh, three loopback one, 3003. You can see that's pingable. However, if you're trying to ping uh, three loopback three, you can see that fails. Okay, now we need to perform a route summarization and we want to make sure that we come up with the smallest route summarization, just enough to include the loopback one through three. So, and that will be done on R3 here, under fast zero zero. Command is IP v6 summary address, EIGRP one, and then you have to come up with the prefix. Since we have three contiguous slash 64 prefix here, the smallest one that we can do for the prefix is three zero zero slash 62. You can see it refreshes right away. And now if we hop back to R2 and then do show IPv6 route EHRP one more time, hopefully we just see a single summary route, which we do, we no longer see the individual external routes. Okay, now in the verified reachability, so let me do up arrow. That's a three loopback one interface. That's loopback two. And loopback three, which we failed to ping earlier. You can see this pingable. Oh, let's see. Oh, it's actually two right there. There you go. You can see R2 now can ping R3 loopback three as well, since it's part of that summary route. So let's go back and take a quick look at task number five, and looks like we have completed them all. Okay, so for our task number six, which is our final task of this lab, we just want to demonstrate the behavior ability of EIGRP stub. So now we need to configure R3 to only advertise its own connected subnet without passing through route learning from R2 and R3. I think that should be R1 right there. So another typo here. But the whole idea is to um, turn R1 into a EIGRP stop router. You can see right here, the hint is the route filter is not allowed. So we're going to turn R1 into stop so it would not pass the route back and forth between R2 and R3. Okay, so the command to do that is fairly straightforward on R1. Under the routing process, which is IPv6 router EIGRP1, we have EIGRP stub, and you can see you can specify what type of routes you want the R1 to be able to advertise, whether it's connected or you just want it to receive only, or any redistributed route static or summary. 
for us we only have the connected subnet to deal with on R1 so we'll say connected as you do that it refreshes the adjacency to both R3 and R2 and if you go on to R2 and this is the routing table that we have earlier let's try to take another look right now you can see that R2 no longer uh, learn routes that belongs to R3 because as soon as you turn R1 to stop, it stops relaying the or re-advertising the route it learns. And all we see is the connected subnet, which is the R1 loopback 0, and then the R1 fast 00 VLAN 123 interface subnet. Okay, the same thing should happen with uh, 3 as well. With IPv6 route via HRP. You can see all it knows about is the R1 connected subnet and the default route that advertised per R2 is no longer in the routing table of R3. Okay, so EHP stop, a very useful feature to make sure the router doesn't become a transit router, which is usually for the router that sits at the edge of your network. Okay, so that completes our final task number six. Okay, so again, EIGRP v6 is very similar in concepts and configuration compared to our conventional EIGRP with IP version 4, but this potentially support less feature of the current version of iOS than remember to enable EIGRP v6 on the interface level instead of the, using the network command of the routing process. So that wraps up our video on IPv6 with EIGRP. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmates.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.